Thank you, Nomad. Yeah, game Welcome. number two. Looking to get right into it. Look at this. They're circling. The sharks are circling. But they're not going in. They're not feeding just yet. Why don't we have a shark as a hero in Dota 2? Like we I have Kanka's ship that is... Uh, is he like... Yeah, he, there's a cosmetic, but uh, I don't think he's... Uh, I would like to see like a hammerhead cosmetic. Sure, sure. First, like Slardar. Not even Slard. Just so you have those like two eyes that are just looking that way. And then he wouldn't get stunned by Medusa because he's not looking. Right into Medusa's eyes. Yeah, Faceless Void, uh, you know, cannot be stone gazed because he has no eyes. no eyes. Yeah. He has no face. War friendly, like, skill interaction or ability interaction would be great. I'd enjoy that so much. We might see something in the anime, but in Dota, it's not going to happen. Man, I'm actually so hyped about it. <laughs> like, something we didn't ask for, suddenly it's like, well, yeah, you know what? Here's a. Uh, Dragonite anime, like what? <laughs> I was actually laughing at uh, Tsunami. He was like, oh, first episode, you know, he's going to be farming. And like one episode, he takes neutrals. <laughs> eight like, episodes, like eight stages. First, he is, you know, getting dumpstered in the lane. He goes to jungle, episode two. Uh, he gets ganked uh, through episode, uh, from episode two to six. And then he makes a comeback. Episode seven, takes the Roshan. And episode eight is the pause episode. episode. finale, he takes the throne. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I was going to say, if there's like a one pause episode, for some reason, he makes a reference towards feeding down mid. <laughs> yeah, one of, the, one of the teammates, there's like a Dragonite and Mirana. Mirana's missing all the arrows. Like, <laughs> dude, I need to go first. Like, I need to stun with the Dragon Tail for the setup. And Mirana's like refusing. Uh, it could be a lot of fun. Now, let's focus on this one. So, Bloodseeker on the bottom lane. Pretty strong laner going into Urn of Shadows, which I really like. Uh, some mana, some extra armor, even though he doesn't need. Sitting at 6 right now, but can easily get a Spirit Vessel after that to get the Morphling, the overtime damage, a lot of synergy. So, something that I really like. You don't necessarily need to, like, rush it. Right. But, okay, bottom lane. Almost well, got it. Forward. Luckily, BDZ's there for the two-man stun. I would possibly love to see Road of Atos against Storm Spirit, against the Morphling, against Pango. Root mechanic just feels really, really good. They're limited on the lockdowns. They have no stuns other than Earthshaker. They have Root mechanic from the Crystal Maiden, but still, like, Road of Atos should feel really, really good this game on FBZ. I mean, once he gets Shard, do you really need anything else? Shard is just the overwhelming stun you for all oh, times on, on Shaker. Oh, Shaker, sure. Yeah. I was thinking about like Bloodseeker, Shard, no, no, like no. what? No, just Shard on Earthshaker. I didn't like, sleep that's all you tonight. need. I've slept for four hours. I know you didn't sleep too much either. B cup of bottom lane, FBZ in a bit of a trouble. Yeah, gets into the trees. Yo, he needs to be careful about how he positions himself because Hyde's right here. BZ sitting low, but so is Yoey. Looking for an opportunity maybe to get that first blood stun. Misses. Not enough mana right now for Hyde to throw out a fissure or anything as BDZ tries to go after FBZ. Yeah, There's a lot a of the BZs, DZs on the bottom. Where is Making BZZ? me kind of DZ. <laughs> is that spelled DZ or D or the normal way? I won't even try to spell right now. Oh, man. Um... Is this okay? So I actually had a hold on vortex Makoto. He's, he's fine, but Ken, he's playing aggressive. Ken he might like not want to play uh, aggressive against Makoto at the moment, but he does get that salve off. So maybe Makoto ends up being the one who drops. Shaker without mana teeping, love that one. You know, just pretend you have mana. He probably didn't check on the storm spirit. Like, yeah. man, I need to be careful. Uh, he also doesn't have any healing cells or anything to provide Makoto with. It's a skill-based matchup. Like, TA against the Storm Spirit, it could easily go both ways. Like, one small mistake, and uh, suddenly you get a kill, you snowball, you get a bottle. Right. Still wanting to go in. Still looking to control the four-minute rune. If they can. They've got a bottle picked up by the TA. All right, clicks again on the Ken. Makoto, I'm just loving this TA aggression right now. And the rune is top. Oh, double, double damage. damage for TA. 
Blessed by Gaben. With an Earthshaker sitting top, with an Earthshaker sitting They were just mid. moving. Every, every single time, uh, like Ken moves, Makoto moves in the same direction. <laughs> yeah, you know? They're kind of like tethered to each other, <laughs> waiting for that moment to get a fissure in. He is waiting in the trees, but coming around is the Nyx Assassin to try and spot this Earthshaker. He's done so. Okay, so BDZ finds out Hyde's plans. Uh, Rapido. Not letting me ask my question is he is going to get low and drop here to Kezcute for first blood for Boom. So, Fissure, Totem on a BDZ. You were talking about Rotobatos. Yeah, that could be the pickup here for FBZ. You talked about how you want a root or you want the extra lockdown with the rod being used on the Morphling or the Storm. Both would help. Does that then maybe make you think Gleipnir? Because that sure, item seems like, like a little bit of a bait at times. Like, if you tank up on the hero, like, he either goes straight into Spirit Vessel, into possibly Pipe. Ooh, Fissure, Ken in trouble. He's only level 5. The right click's coming through. There's oh, the stun from BDZ. Pale. He'll keep his storm alive. He was over here mid just a moment ago, but gets the TP. Oh, Kez cute. Coming around, surprising Ken. That's actually a big kill. And yeah, now Stormfrit needs to like uh, go back to the lane if Earthshaker's going to be around. Uh, he needs to be careful. Another good BDZ, Fisher block. BDZ. One more shot. Spike Carapace is gone, but the stun is there, and he'll survive. That kill onto Storm definitely opens the, the lane for TA, and TA is one of those heroes. Given space, you are going to regret it. So Storm needs to go back to lane, farm level 6, hide. Ooh, maybe not, hide, drop it to Ken. Now he's level 6. Goes after Kez cute with the Frostbite. Illuminate, Ball Lightning playing aggressive, still working with about half his mana thanks to RR coming in. He gets a kill on a Kez Q, looking over at Makoto, body blocks from RR. That'll keep him out from nice killing done. Ken. Like these two kills are kind of getting Ken back into the game. Also. For someone who what names himself Hyde, you would expect him to play more stealthy, being able to use Fog of War, but mm -hmm. uh, he's actually been seen multiple times with his rotations. 1k lead for Boom at the moment. Ursa just well ahead of the Morphling. At least for now. Uh, 23 Savage, he's had two solid games so far. I know game two is pretty early, but up to this point, I think... He's done real well. Yeah, his laning stage uh, looks really good. 41 CS, 90 Nice. Uh, going into Battle Fury, pretty standard stuff. Also, he has a Crystal Maiden Aura to work with, so he can spam his spells. Big zip. Yeah, going after Kez Cute here. FBZ dead bottom. They get two kills for Execration. Ball Lightning looking for more with the Vortex pulling in 23 Savage. Hi, there's really not much he can do to help out. And, well, he's trying to run, but... This Urs is dead. Double kill for Ken. Ken gets killed mid and then flips the switch and. It's him like and Keeper of kills. the Light just playing together. And yeah. look at this juicy stack that Ken is about to farm. It's a uh, one, two, three, four stack. You'd think they'd be aware of this too with KSQ coming over and have spawning a couple stacks prior. Oh, this is such a dope item. Like, Possessed Mask on the Morphling. For now, Storm Spirit is just keeping it, you know, because he found it. Like, it, it's mine. Now he's going to probably use this one as well. Trusty Shovel, he sends it back. Very interesting. No, he didn't. Never mind. He didn't just pick it up. Like, you use it once, and then you give it to someone else. Rupture with Ursa coming in. Blood right down. He silenced up bottom, Yoey. Trying to morph as much as he can into the strength, but eventually, well, 2140 health is not going to be enough as 23 Savage helps to get that kill and gets credit for it. Once it gets ruptured, you don't get too much value out of it this game. Yeah, it's good against Pango, it's uh, not good against Storm Spirit uh, nor Morphling, so. They can just use it. Right now, Execration doing a very good job just playing with uh, Storm Spirit and Keeper of the Light. They're right. using another smoke. Smoke bottom. Let's see what they can get, if anything, out of this. Hide. He'll be spotted. Stunned and rolling thunder. But now going after BDZ. Rolling thunder hits on both the Ursa as well as Hide. Fissure just before he dies. They still, though, don't 
get much out of this, at least not yet. This is also such a nasty combo. We've seen it in Southeast Asia so many times. Keeper of the Light plus Pangolier reducing the cooldown on the Swashbuckle, on the Shield Crash at the later stages of the game. Once you have that, it's just so good. You know, having a Disarm, then another Swashbuckle with another Disarm. So pretty even game, a bit uh, more active on both sides than in the previous one. Koto going after the stack, going into the Blink Dagger first. See uh, how quickly he goes blink to Desso. Oh, he found uh, two neutral items. Still Dyer's didn't uh, pick up anything. There's a jelly for the bear, of course, Radiant's and uh, also just a shovel. Well, looks like he's going to use the royal jelly and keep the shovel. No right, shovel. Keep the shovel back. Okay. What a player. The player, you know, just doesn't even want to use it. Uh, gives it to his position four or five to be able to get the most out of it. RR bottom, 23 Savage spots him. A little blinding light, but the Fissure perfectly placed. And now RR going to be ransacked by 23 Savage. Oh, what is but going on with oh, Ursus? He like gets I've, away. I've seen this so many times. Slips like by him. Ursus okay. just using Enrage. It doesn't deal extra damage anymore. Like. Pro players, uh, you know, sometimes uh, either don't read the patch notes or very slow to adapting about the changes. Because I've seen it so many times across like all other regions, or just popping a BKB and the Enrage at the same time. Same goes for Slark Shadow Dance and the BKB at the same time, which you you do not want to use, do not want to overlap. Now, overlapping, not good. Usually overlapping stuns, attack. also not good. Yeah. Got to read those bars, let them get down to pretty close. Try to chain them together, not overlap them. The only time overlapping's good, Venn diagrams. That's two circles overlapping over each other. I don't sure know if that's the only Radiance example. But there's probably a couple of more examples, but you know, we can only think of this one. Smoke? Earthshaker is only level five. He's uh, bringing wow. a tome, I believe. Yeah, so that's going to get him to level six. Uh, he's going into Mana Boots, which I don't like. You have Crystal Maiden Aura, even though it's uh, level Radiance 2. You need to get the Blink Dagger up. Rupture used on Rapido as he was trying to go to the Rolling Thunder. Not even going to be needed. Ball Lightning in 10. He'll get the kill on FBZ. I'm not sure I'm a massive fan of Hyde really taking a back seat here in terms of farm. He should definitely try to get some farm for himself. Stacks continuing to be built here by Kes. And there is Triangle. no way, like, in no universe, not the Dota anime universe, you get mana boots here. Like, yeah, he just switches to a blank dagger immediately. Because stun, swashbuckle, and now there's the ulti popped. Got the silence on the 23 Savage, but root on to Ken. They're still trying to keep up with this Ursa rolling thunder. Right on 23 Savage, swashbuckle in. Ooh, Echo Slam on just one. So trying to go after the Pangolier while on the other side of this fight, you've got TA trying to fight four now, 5v1. Ken dies to the Fissure, but Makoto dies to Ken beforehand. Looks like maybe FBZ opportunity. Oh, he just needed two right clicks. I'm not sure why 23 Savage is uh, trying to fight with the team. He just needs to farm Battle Fury, hit some creeps instead of uh, trying to make stuff happen. Just let the... TA, Shaker do the rest. Good thing in the previous fight for them, for Boom, was that Earthshaker got the last hit on the Storm Kill, which gave him another like 500 extra gold. So, get a look at this replay right now as Ball Lightning all the way in, down onto the low ground. You've got Rapido coming forward with the Rolling Thunder. 23 Savage ends up dead, and Echo Slam committed on a Rapido. It's a one man Echo Slam, but. I don't know if I'm expecting much more considering the fact that Earthshaker's got, you know, such a little farm. So we get a quick pause coming through and we'll see how long this one lasts. A little back and forth talking about the lag. No blood for you. Uh, so right now just nine to five. Nine to five. I dig that, you know, it's a European working time. 
American Working Time. Kinda, maybe? Also, okay. It's the Dolly Parton song. Working 9 to 5, don't DMC my vibe. Working <laughs> 9 to 5. That's a good song. Earthshaker, my man, what are you doing in this territory? Oh, it is uh, very hostile. Like, he needs to have him. Oh, and now going in onto this Bloodseeker with the Orchid, just a quick kill. This is Storm going off. Ken died once, and... It's just such a strong combo. In the previous patch, it was Chen with the recall. Replenish the mana on Storm Spirit, something that Na'Vi did uh, during the Epic League so many times. And uh, now, this combo is better because he can recall you, he can also give you mana. So, a much better combination between Keeper of the Light and Storm Spirit. Oh, smoke from Keskut and Makoto right as Execration were right up on their tail. Big zip. Over 23 Savage. Now Makoto all by himself here with that Orchid Vortex. Illuminate coming through. Makoto in a lot of trouble. He's dead on his screen already and now dead in the game. Battle Fury picked up for the Ursa, so they have given 23 Savage a little bit of time here to get to that Battle Fury. One of the things I was going to mention that I just noticed is TA is going Blink Orchid, not Blink Deso. I guess, I guess, I mean, that's that's fine if you're snowballing. She's still on top of the network where TA should be. But I can understand why. They have very limited lockdown. The only stun they have is pretty much Earthshaker. So they need some kind of uh, extra control against the Storm Spirit, against the Morphling. But once you get that, like, Storm Spirit might have another, like, way to deal with that, not Daya's another, but like one one way, get the possibly like a BKB or, like, or a Yule Scepter. Right. And Morphling will have Mantis style before that Orchid is finished. Yeah, so we'll see if the silences are even really going to work it uh, enough here for the side of Boom. Speaking of silences, I'm a big fan of the uh, you being shark. silent, you, you shutting up. No, i just kidding. <laughs> uh, what did you say? DA with the silence? I hear it's going to be silent. Okay. So solo casting coming through. <laughs> uh, time to, I'm one more time, be a play-by-play. Play. You know, when uh, Black and me did the cast. Ooh, oh, Ursa. CDZ, a bit of a, a trouble again. Fissure. Hyde getting caught. Echo Slam, that's committed. They've got the silence and the rupture. The question is, do they have the Ursa damage follow the kill? That's there nice it is. Done. Rapido, oh, just rolling Thunder away with a swashbuckle to get some more distance between him and Kez Cute. That was put together pretty perfectly from Boom. A little bit of a bait there from Hyde. Hyde did a very good job. Not hesitating at all, even though like he's having a rough time. Uh, got caught uh, multiple times. Just uh, uses the Echo Slam right there. We've seen uh, some players struggle, especially when they play like Enigma, Tidehunter. They don't use the first Ravage or the Black Hole. Second one is kind of a failure, then it gets into their head. But uh, for Hyde, I, I love like how confident he was. They're just using the Echo Slam. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's getting him closer and closer to picking up that Blink Dagger. Meanwhile, FBZ, he's caught Vortex into the stun. That's a good combo. Pretty gross combo, and Ken just still going off. 8-3-3. Three, and three. Blink Dagger now finally picked up for the Earthshaker. I believe he also has Philosopher's Stone coming in. Oh, Fele. That's just too good on the Earthshaker. Yeah. Especially if you're not having a, that good of a game. You know, gets you closer to the shard. And uh, you can actually scale. You know, if this game drags for like 30, 40 minutes, uh, you're going to get uh, a free item. Huzzah! He just gets to have a Philosopher's Stone attack. drop and... Radiance top tower is Edward under Elric would be happy to have that. It's not fair to him. He has to spend a whole series trying to find it. 1k lead here for Boom. As BDZ continuing to try and use that Vendetta, gain some information, break, and the stun onto the Crystal Maiden. But while that's going on, they're going after FBZ. Fissure comes through, but jumping right over it is Rapido. Rolling Thunder Shield crash down. Old to use by Kez Q. Adaptive Strike is in, as well as the Ball Lightning. So another double here for Ken. I believe putting him at 10, 3, and 3. Ken is just popping off this game. 
He's popping off, but Boom have done a good job of keeping up. Like, you know, TA's died twice, Ursa's died twice. So 11 of those deaths are on the other three, and those were you know, deaths where they've built enough space still for Boom to have those two heroes top of the network. Like, I, I think Boom, while, yeah, Ken is having a game, will there be an opportunity with this much space for them to control Ken at some point? They need BKBs, uh, you can see. Oh, God, Kez can get Kez queued once oh, again, oh, just uh, getting deleted from the game in a second. BDZ. By Carapace. Nicely done to use that off the cleave of the Battle Fury. Echo Slam coming in. That's onto the Morphling. They've got the Fissure to follow it up, but they just don't have the damage. He turns into the Air Shaker, throws a Fissure out. That lands on a hide. Wave form. And he always fine. So that Echo Slam, not doing much. Yeah. Uh, they, they need a better fight. They need BKBs. Uh, just try to slow the game down a bit. Uh, possibly take one fight to get inside a pit. But uh, I feel Execration also wants to keep fighting and possibly steal Aegis from the Boom. Like, that would be so big. Stealing Aegis from Ursa and TA is massive. Ooh, Orchid, blink away. Oh. Making an escape. So... 1k lead right now. Ken, though, going into the BKB might make it very tough for them to control. They have no abilities that go through Stupendous. magic immunity besides Rupture, and uh, you don't care about Rupture at all. One Thunder and Rage used. They've got the Blood right down. That silences up the Nyx Assassin. But there's the Blink Forward from the TA with the Orchid, so that turns into a kill right now from Makoto. Still wondering if that build is going to be the build that works for this TA. She also needs a BKB. To, you know, just being able to jump Radiant in, get the, get some right clicks going without uh, having to fear for her life. Earthshaker still a thousand gold away from the shard. Once you get that, uh, the game just ends, as we've seen uh, multiple times. If you had a Morphling on your team. Yeah. Morphling is on the enemy team, so. You can get the other example of good overlapping. Double fissures. Double totems. That was a gross combo. Like, eventually, you can just buy Aghanim Scepter on the Morph, buy a shard, use that against the Earthshaker and his team. He's going E-Blade right now, looking Dyer's to pop some uh, heroes attack. on the side of Boom. E-Blade is so good. Against Ursa, against uh, TA, uh, like Shaker's uh, very vulnerable. Crystal Maiden getting uh, close to her. She actually finishes uh, a Glimmer Cave, so that's going to help out quite a lot. Not a big Sitter. fan of Bloodseeker yeah. getting a Yule Scepter as his like, second slash second oh, off damage. item. You also have Crystal Maiden already in the team, so just... Either a Spirit Vessel or a Road of Athos, it's also much easier to set up. And I go it also gives you stats, you know, gives you more survivability compared to the sector. Not going for either of them. Bit of a surprise. No Rod, no Spirit Vessel, only the Urn. Even a Pipe for the team, in my opinion, would be much better. Link Echo available. Double damage Ursa. <laughs> Execration, they know. They, they know. You can see RR already channeling Illuminate. Ooh, that Illuminate ended up short. I'm not sure that caught vision. Also, Shaker should not be in the inside the bit, but they, they don't want to contest. That's very surprising. I In terms of network, they're like even. Did the Illuminate Excellent. come up short and they just thought they're not, they're not in there? It's a possibility. Because it, it only went to the edge of the pit. I wonder if that gave them, like, false information. Th this is pretty big for Boom. You know, just uh, getting that uh, first Roche. Now Ursa has the Aegis. BKB done. What did he buy? Did he buy a Blink Dagger? Yeah, it's a Blink okay. Dagger. So it's going to be much easier for him to reposition and find the, the targets in the back line, get a first jump. I don't know if 
this one next. Blink forward, not catching anything just yet. Going after the tier one tower. Fissure, it eventually does hit on the BDZ. Just moving in, hoping to find something. Might just spike Carapace off the cleave again. And well, he does, but doesn't jump forward afterwards. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Are <laughs> Still trying to take this tier one tower and eventually they will. That's money in the bank for Boom that they are withdrawing and with this Aegis, I think there's a lot of confidence for Boom, but they can't get too comfortable with that confidence because we've seen Execration, especially Ken this game, who's been able to really just control and take heroes out of the fight and kill them pretty quickly. And now with the E-Blade on Morphling, well, they have they're e just as deadly. And BKB on Strong Spread. So Execration should try to look for a fight. Even though they're, <laughs> they're still ages on Ursa, I feel they can take this fight if executed properly. Like, take out one heroes with the E-Blade. Storm Spread can make a lot of uh, chaos, find the, the right target. Just uh, sure. Okay. That's a good Blink jump. Totem, but there's the wave for me. Blade Adaptive Strike. That's what we were talking about. Blown heroes up. High's gone. Full whip trying to run, but there's the silence. And that'll be a second. Makoto and Hyde getting caught. They bought back on the Earth Shaker. That's going to slow down the shard. They, they found FBZ. They back on the Earth Shaker, but can't, they can't take the fight, I think, without TA. They need to be careful. Fissure comes out, but Hyde's stunned up for a second. KB's been popped by 23 Savage. RR's courier goes down. BDZ dead. Now the Echo Slam. This is placed onto the Morph Wing. Rolling Thunder runs out. They've got the Silence on the Morph. They just don't have the damage yet. Frostbite, Waveform. Attention on a Kez Cute. Kill on a Kez Cute as finally Yoey dies. That's the 23 Savage who has found confidence with this Aegis in his inventory. Storm's and out now of going after chasing. Ken. There's the setup. They've got right, the Yules, there's the Fissure, Blood Right to follow yeah, afterwards. No, the BKB's in time, but again, just a little bit of mana help from See, RR. They're still gonna get him. No look for Ken. Fissure in his four seconds. Two, one, Blood Right Totem doesn't even need it. Blood Right gets the kill, RR dead as well. Now, Rapido, he showed up and he's out of mana. A little chase, they've got 23 Savage on his tail. Nix, 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 Nix from the top. Oh, good good stun. stun. Yeah, this fight went much better than I expected for Boom. They, they bought back on Earthshaker, but he got his gold back from uh, all of these kills and the Philosopher's Stone gold kicking in. Yeah, so we'll have that shard in just a second. It's actually, like, when I'm thinking about it, you know, Rupture against the Morphling, Morphling doesn't care too much about it, but he's not movable attack. in a fight. He has to stand his ground and they can play around him. You also don't want to sit still against hero like an Ursa who pops a BKT and you have no counterplay to that. BDC once again, he found TA. Rolling Thunder, Makoto on the run still, bull whip. No follow up from the storm because he's dead for eight more seconds. Nah, it's very hard to play when your hero is dead. Well, you're not allowed to do anything like that, you know? You just you click and click It happened click. to all of us, you know? You're kind of playing with the hero, clicking Radiant around, and then you realize your hero is dead. You're thinking you can do something, but you still got five seconds left. We've all done it, chat. You can admit it. We're friendly here. Now the waveform and the E-Blade. Comes through onto the TA, who will use Radiant that Orchid attack. on the Nyx Assassin and play aggressive. Makoto wants BDZ. Pops the spike, Carapace. 23 Savage coming around the back. They've also got FBZ showing up. Point forward from 23 Savage. Cleaning up a little bit is Nyx Assassin. Nyx, Nyx, Nyx is his way out of this. You can see TA doesn't deal that much damage without a Desolator. It's just a, a completely different hero. And we could see in the previous fight also the difference, let's say, with the TA holding that Aegis and not having it. So she just... Uh, Disappears immediately if they get a good jump on her. Pango also has full Heaven's Halberd, an item that we usually don't see, but uh, another way of disarming two cores that rely on just dealing heavy right click damage. So that could be a really good pickup. Two to top, in some trouble. Spider Wake's found by this storm who's going to the Bloodstone. Huzzah! 
Okay, we. Yes. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see what the plan is here. Just gonna try to defend. BDZ moving forward. There's the break. There's the stun. Ball lightning in with the vortex. Can they get the kill on a 23 Savage? Yes, they can. Illuminate with the rolling thunder. He's gone. Makoto pops the KB and will just TP away. The rest of the team getting out of there. Ooh, FBZ was. Spike Therapist on the blood right. Ball lightning. Look at the range from Ken. They've got the vortex. He avoids the fissure. Continues to move forward. I believe getting hit by the shard and eventually FBZ. I think he's <laughs> trying to find a way out of this one, but he's not going to. He cornered himself. 23 Savage should be a bit more careful. Uh, their heroes are not that good at just going in and dealing damage to towers, especially once because uh, TA doesn't have a Deso. Oh, BDZ. Uh, let's pretend we didn't see that one. Dyer's middle tower we didn't. is under okay. attack. So yeah, they need another Aegis. Cheese and Aegis on Ursa and the TA. It's gonna be much uh, easier to Dyer's possibly like siege the high ground. Fine. Like there's a clear difference when Boom played with Drew and now that they're playing with 20, 23 Savage, like this kind of a move, I don't think Drew would ever do. Because yeah. he always felt so afraid to just go in and hit the towers. So like when, like his game on Troll with the Aegis, like he just did not want to deal tower damage. And 23 Savage is a different kind of a player. You know, bottom tower is under attack. Bit more high risk, uh, high reward. Dyer's bottom tower. Okay. Echo slam. Wow. Through yo. Wow. Yeah. The wrong that's... way, buddy. <laughs> he misused the attribute chip. Man, he just gets destroyed. Radiant and well, BDZ, he's gonna follow. His courier also dies. Fissure comes out. Hide. Grabbing a kill on the two. It's like they learned nothing from what they just did to Boom. Our hero goes in, tries to siege. I want to see that one again, if possible. Yeah, because... I mean, that started with the Echo missing, right? No, I think he, he hit the Echo while he was uh, shifting. He started shifting uh, into only... strength and then just decided to shift into Agile for some reason. Uh, no, his death summary is only a Fissure and a Blood Rite. That killed him. There's the death for the TA. This has to be like one of the latest latest desos for sure, yeah. It's a 31 minute deso. Work kind of worked out though, right? Yeah, they got some kills out of it. Not too much, I would say. Kept them close. 4k lead. Almost an abyssal for Ursa. Going uh, Abyssal Nullifier Axe. 23 Savage. He knows what he wants. He knows, you know, how to play aggressive, how to push forward. They have no silences except Storm Spirit's Orchid. So Agon has a lot of value if he manages to farm it. FBZ. He will stun Very and the Rolling Thunder. Now the ball lightning out of the back lines with BKBB popped early in this fight. They've got the disarm on the 23 Savage, but Ken, you need to be careful. Your BKB's gonna run out soon. They get the kill on FBZ. They'll find one freezing field coming through as well as the stun onto RR. FBZ is the only one who's dead, but he's gonna buy back. The Fissure comes through into Yoey. And now, can they get anything more? They'll take out RR, Bloodseeker back in. They finish off Hyde. They give him from Makoto, and that gives him enough ability to get in on the Ken and take out the Storm, who does not have buyback. So they've singled out this Morphling, who tried to run, turns into the Earthshaker, gets a totem down, but he silenced due oh, to the blood right. Fury swipes on him. Yeah, he is dead. super dead. So Roshan will respawn right now, like a perfect timing. Look at this. They know. Mikoda pings it out. Uh, let's go inside a pit. Take Ro take Cheese and Aegis. Like Ursa should uh, once again take uh, Aegis, I think, here. He gets the priority. 
TA holding a spot open. Okay, they, they swap things around. And also TA looking to grab yeah, a shard. shard. Yeah, yeah shard. I was talking about that earlier, how that silence Three is kind of nice. Against Morphling, against like Pango, Stone Spirit, you get so much value out of it. I actually like it. I'm pretty sure you can set it up full duration too, right? Fissure, Totem, yeah. right on the Fissure, you set the trap down, Totem, pop the trap, and then... Well, yeah, now that I'm thinking done. about it, it's much better to give Aegis the Temple Assassin. She still feels rather squishy, and I don't think they have enough like lockdown to burst Ursa from 100 to 0. With the Abyssal Blade done, some damage block, BKB. So, yeah. He should be able to get uh, the cheese off. They also bought the gem. Kez Q to his job. Ursa Where's will the be body? the one holding it, but I, I think he's out of slots. Like, he should hold cheese instead. Yeah. So I think he passes that gem back. Bloodseeker holding it for now. Ball lightning all the way through to the jungle. See if they set up here for execration. Man, actually, just flash your TA. Gold and Invis, and they kind of just two ships in the night pass each other. Interesting. So, 9k lead for Boom. Zoe, we haven't really felt a lot of effectiveness from more. Uh, keep On paper, that it kill. looks like a good Morphling game. I think he should have gotten more out of this game on Morphling because there are no real counters to him. And now, boom, they're going for the high ground. Yeah. Kudo just going out of the high ground. No fear in taking this right now with the Aegis. They've got the Abyssal ready to go, so Ken, even if he jumps in, he needs to be very careful. Radiant structures are BKB, there's the Abyssal jump. And a four staff back. They've got Nyx Assassin in a bad spot. Fissure down onto the ground. Blink Foe with Rolling Thunder. Falling in with the Silence Vortex. Pulling back the Ursa and the Adaptive Strike. Whoa, 23 Savage is gone. They'll take out the Aegis from this TA. Things kind of falling apart for Boom. They did get a kill on a Nyx Assassin, but that's it. Fissure, Yoey, Totem. Buyback used by 23 Savage. He needs to get back into the fight. What? But now he's used the buyback what? and the team is retreating. Why did he buy back there? Like, it's not like they killed the three heroes they are going to end the game. That's one of the weirdest buybacks we've seen from the core so far in the DPC League. That's for sure. Like, they're not getting anything out of this buy unless somehow they, you know, manage to get in, get a couple of kills. Uh, yeah, if uh, this was an Overwatch case, I'd say pretty guilty. Depends what you get reported for. Ability abuse, griefing. Griefing, yeah. <laughs> Ken, Fissure, silence, he's caught out. Unfortunate for Ken, but Makoto, he'll happily take that kill. Well, I thought they can't, you know, kill him from 100 to 0, but they actually can. They managed to kill Ursa. Maybe he needs some uh, help with the Fisher. Also, a Glimmer Cape, a Four Staff would have helped. Trying to lead a charge now into the base again. They just paid for their aggression. The admission being a buyback from 23 Savage. There he goes again. Oh, the cleave. Man, look at that damage coming in. Oh, yeah, my God. He actually, he actually killed, killed Aura first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you died to cleave damage first. Okay, so he kind of redeemed himself with this jump. They got the two kills. They get the set of barracks, and now they're not stopping. Also, Execration kind of handled it to them. Storm Spirit being on a different side of the map. Uh, just getting killed by two heroes, and uh, now they're going in. Ursa still has cheese, remember? Yeah. He didn't get a chance to use it when he died previously. Hex picked up from Makoto. Here's the disarm. Here's your totem lockdown coming in. 
and they got what they came for. Yeah. I mean, they get a more than a set of racks. Like, that's perfect. They do need to be a little bit careful, though. Uh, guys, you know, they did buy back on Earth. Uh, so. Dropped Stormcrafter. 23 Savage was picking it out. You know, I don't want to be here. Someone else pick it up. It's a good item, especially on the Earth Shaker, because he doesn't have any defensive items. Right. So just the dispel mechanic is great against the storm, possibly to dodge the E blade, which you're still very vulnerable against. Still lingering around that 13k. We'll see if X Creation can somehow bring this back, but it is tough. Remember, traps do silence people, so it's uh, quite hard to play into it, especially if the BKBs are down. Gonna be level 25 soon for the TA too. Hide right on top of two, gets a two-man totem with the fissure. There's the Echo Slam. RR and Rapido both dropping and uh, there's no response from Execration. Mikoto is just caught out. going full control with his item build. Silence coming up from the traps. Silence from the Orchid. Sight of Vice also now level 25 talent. So one second. Bash coming out from the meld on top of that. Has been killed. I feel like Execration should have uh, at least put more fight in this game because... Like, it looked very, very good for them until they just started to chain feed. Yeah, Ken had a really interesting start. Died, and then all of a sudden he's 10-3-3. Three, and three. He was 10-3-3. Three, and three. Since then, he's 4-3-3. Three, and three. Obviously being slowed down quite a bit. That BKB at 6 seconds. He's going into the Ags. We'll see if that makes much of a difference. But it's not even Ken that I'm more concerned with his performance. It's Yo. He seems very passive at times. Or really, we just haven't felt his presence. At this point, it's a very hard morph game because you don't have Butterfly, like you don't have Scotty. Yeah, you're tanky, but like once Ursa gets a jump on you, you can't just fight him. So, 20k lead. We've seen bigger comebacks, so anything is possible. A possibility, yeah. Yeah. Especially if you lie, then anything is also possible. So just wait for the next Roche. Could respawn in uh, five seconds. You're already two set of oh. barracks ahead. You don't have to rush anything. You also have a trap scouting things out. Let's see the Roche respawn. Full duration, three minutes. <laughs> so we'll see uh, if, in fact, Boom okay. wait for that. You know, they, they do lose an Aegis pretty quickly, as well as Ursa. They might want to just play it safe, wait for that opportunity to go get Roche. Why not? Doesn't hurt them to do so, in my opinion. Radiant are scanning. Eggs on this Ursa. He also wants Swift Blink, so we'll see which one he commits to first. You do have the Swift Blink finished on the TA, though, so... TA, top of the net worth, pretty farmed, happy with everything. There's going to be uh, potentially Ags or a Refresher dropping on the next Roche. Ags, Radiance Courier we'll see who ends up killed. getting it. Maybe Ursa, if he's already got one queued up. Yeah, he'll, he'll definitely get it. And just buy a different item, get that Swift Blink. Swift Blink is just an insanely good item. Rupture used, and now Kezq with the BKB, freezing field. That'll be a little bit of a zoning hold. That's fine, as they'll use that Echo. They'll get the Kona Rapido. RR falls to buyback used here by the Pangolier. They're trying to get the Nyx Assassin, who was in for his first second. Ken falls to no buyback available on the Storm or this Coddle. So yeah, this uh, looks uh, like a game. Crystal Maiden with the BKB baiting the full duration. BKB from the morph, he's like, yeah, I should try to hit her. Then she gets the extra 20 armor from the ulti. 
and you're like, I need to go back. Like, I can't deal with that. And uh, seems like that's just gonna be the game. Storm Spirit, uh, no buyback. Uh, he needs 500 more. Try to invest all of his gold into Aghanim Scepter. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of a risky play. Even if he has a buyback there, it still wouldn't matter, in my opinion. So, like, decided to go for the correct play. You know, try to invest everything. Uh, get that Aghanim Scepter. Maybe it could potentially turn things around. But uh, right now, it's uh, all looking like boom. Yeah, Swiftwing picked up by the Morphling, trying to make something happen here as they go for the Tier 4 towers. Boom pretty much having this one signed, sealed, and delivered. But they just have to uh, mark it as delivered. As look at that. Just three shot. ROR getting blown up real quick, and he doesn't have buyback deck for 46. They're going to pop the BKB on Yui, trying to go after this Ursa. The Fissure comes through as well as the Totem. Ooh, rolling Thunder back and forth. Finally, a blink in. Can they get the kill on a Yui? Yes, they can. It's 23 Savage who takes care of the Morphling. They've got the Totem on top, trying to dive these heroes in the well as GG's already been called. Four gone with BDZ falling into the grave, and there's the Pango surviving as they tried to finish him off before it ends. Pop the BKB on Yui, trying to go after this Ursa. The Fissure comes through as well as the Totem. Ooh, rolling Thunder back and forth. Finally, a blink in. Can they get the kill on a Yui? Yes, they can. It's 23 Savage who takes care of the Morphling. They've got the Totem on top, trying to dive these heroes in the well as GG's already been called. Four gone with BDZ falling into the grave, and there's the Pango surviving as they tried to finish him off before it ends. Yeah. Boom, uh, great showing in this series.